Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered today on the 14th of the ninth month on our Creator's calendar as we reckon it, which is also the 26th of November, 2022, on the Gregorian calendar. And today we're going to be covering a non exhaustive collection of the two Ruachoth or two spirits, also known as the two ways which rule over a man in his life. <clears throat> There's more throughout the entirety of scripture there's even more references in the testaments of the 12 patriarchs and other places but i don't have them all compiled together yet so this is just a small sample of it but it's a very it's a large sample but it's a good one the first reference and i tried to put them in chronological order is from the testament of yahuda okay and this is starting on verse 46 and i can't remember the chapter so i apologize but it says, Know therefore, my children, that two ruachoth, or spirits, wait upon the man, or wait upon man, the ruach of truth and the spirit of deceit. And in the midst of the, sorry, and in the midst is the ruach of comprehension of the mind, to which belongs to turn wheresoever it will. And the works of truth and the works of deceit are written upon the hearts of men, and each one of them Yahuwah knows. And there is no time at which the works of men can be hid, for on the heart itself have they been written down before Yahuwah. If you ever take the time to look at those Eagle Wings ministry teachings, there is a doctor who goes into how you you become healthier well literally by doing what he said she talks about how science and and doctors and i believe it's it's a place in africa i can't remember where she's from but in the 2005 2007 they started discovering these things how the mind works how memories are retained the connection between your mind and your heart what you choose to focus on and the literal obedience to his word that brings healing to the body so it's amazing stuff but she goes over in detail the mind heart connection and the things that you choose to focus on also have an effect on the heart which produces what either health to your body or disease and this is part of how it, and there is nothing in existence that is not cognizant in torah somewhere you can see right here that the works of men is on the heart itself which is exactly what she shows in her uh in her uh demonstration of what doctors have discovered so to continue it says and the ruach of truth testifies all things and accuses all and the sinner is burnt up by his own heart and cannot raise his face to the judge Right, this next ver uh, this next section is from the visions or testament of Amram, which is really it's in fragments, but it's part of what was collected in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And it says he saw the watchers in my vision, Amram, who was the father of Aaron, Miriam, and Moshe, or Miriam, Aaron, and Moshe in that order. <clears throat> it says in my vision, the dream vision, two men were fighting over me and holding a great contest over me i ask them who are you that you are thus empowered over me they answered me we have been empowered to rule over all mankind they said to me which of us do you choose to rule you i raised my eyes and looked one of them was terrifying in his appearance like a serpent his cloak many colored yet very dark and I looked again, and in his appearance, his visage was like a viper, and wearing exceedingly, and all his eyes. This is fragments, I'm sorry, but I'm only reading this because there's the context in it, you can see later on as well. The two that are ruling over him, this was describing the king of darkness, or Malkirasha, which is also a title for Satan. He says, empowered over you, I replied to him, this watcher, who is he? He answered me, this watcher, right? And his three names are Belial, the prince of darkness, and the king of evil. I said, my master, what dominion, you know, what dominion has he, right? 
And the answer was, and his every way is darkened, his every work darkened. In darkness he, you saw, and he is empowered over all darkness, while I am empowered over all light. From the highest regions to the lowest I rule over all light, and over all that is of Elohim, I rule over every man. Is of his favor and shalom over all the sons of light have I been empowered. I asked him, what are your names? He said to me, my three names are Mikael, which that is not the name of our Mishiach. It is the name of his chief messenger. And that's one of the, the hand in a glove kind of pictures that you can see over and over again. As the father made the son who is like El, so the chief messenger over his people that our Mashiach places is Mikael, who is like El, right? But that's what that name means, right? Who is like El. He's also known as the Prince of Light and the King of Righteousness. And it says, tribes and to them and all his ways are true, and he will heal them of all their ills from or them from death and from destruction over you baruch sons and this is amram speaking to his children again and talking about the king of righteousness and the children of light and what he's going to do for them okay it's in fragments because that's how the scroll was found and translated this is all the generations of yisrael forever angry at me for the sons of righteousness between the sons of lying and the sons of truth. I will make known to you, certainly, I will inform you that all the sons of light will be made light, whereas all the sons of darkness will be made dark. The sons of light, and in all their knowledge they will be, and the sons of darkness will be destroyed. For all foolishness and evil will be darkened, while all shalom and truth will be made light. All the sons of light are destined for light and eternal joy and rejoicing. All the sons of darkness are destined for darkness and death and destruction. Lightness are for the people, and I shall reveal to you from darkness for all. The sons of darkness and the sons of light. Now, this theme you can see was given... This was during the time when Moshe was still young. He would have had this truth. He would have known these things. It was within the sons of Louis that were given that, if you remember. Louis was given the kahuna. You can find that in Yobelim, and it's alluded to in the common scriptures. But um, it was the same thing that you can see throughout the Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs. And it was something that would have been revealed to Yaakov in the entirety when he was given all that would happen to him and his children. And this is all to show that these things were not unknown to our forefathers of old. They were just tampered with and hidden and, and removed from our presence for a time, just like, just like the Dead Sea Scrolls were gone. We didn't know about anything that was in them until they were rediscovered and then made public. This is another thing that was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's from 1QS, or what they call the community rule. This is, no man shall be in the company or in the community of his truth who refuses to enter the covenant of Yahuwah so that he may walk in the stubbornness of his heart. For his nefesh, or inner being, soul, detests the wise teaching of righteous laws. He shall not be counted among the upright, for he has not persisted in the conversion of his life. His knowledge, powers, and possessions shall not enter the council of the community, for whoever plows the mud with wickedness returns defiled. He shall not be declared right by that which his stubborn heart declares lawful, for seeking the ways of light he looks towards darkness. He shall not be reckoned among the perfect. He shall neither be purified by atonement, nor cleansed by purifying waters, nor set apart by seas and rivers, nor washed clean with any oblation. 
unclean, unclean shall he be. For as long as he despises the precepts of Yahuwah, he shall receive no instruction in the community of his counsel. For it is through the Ruach of true counsel concerning the ways of man that all his sins shall be expi expiated right, or forgiven. That he may contemplate the light of life, he shall be cleansed from all his sins by the Ruach of Kodeshah or set apartness, uniting him to his truth. And his inequity shall be expiated by the Ruach of uprightness and humility. And when his flesh is sprinkled with purifying water and set apart by cleansing water, it shall be made clean by the humble submission of his soul or inner being to all the precepts of Elohim. Let him then order his steps to walk perfectly in all the ways commanded by Yahuwah, concerning the times appointed for him, straying neither to the right nor to the left, and transgressing none of his words. And he shall be accepted by virtue of a pleasing atonement before Yahuwah, and it shall be to him a covenant of the everlasting community. The intelligent shall instruct all the sons of light, and shall teach them the nature of all the children of men according to the kind of spirit or ruach which they possess the signs identifying their works during their lifetime their visitation for chastisement and the time of their reward from the elohim of knowledge comes all that is and shall be before ever they existed he established their whole design and when as ordained for them they come into being it is in accord with his esteemed design that they accomplish their task without change the laws of all things are in his hand, and he provides them with all their needs. He has created man to govern the world, and has appointed for him two ruachoth, or spirits, in which to walk until the time of his visitation. Which he mentions in Luke, where he's weeping over them, and says, If only you know, even now, the, the, ma the matters for your shalom, but it, it is hidden for your eyes, for you did not know the time of your visitation. Right? That's directly what this is talking about. And when he's coming again. <clears throat> but it says, In which to walk until the time of, of his visitation, the Ruach Oath of Truth and Unrighteousness. Those born of truth spring from a fountain of light, but those born of unrighteousness spring from a source of darkness. All the children of righteousness are ruled by the prince of light and walk in the ways of light. But all the children of unrighteousness are ruled by the messenger of darkness and walk in the ways of darkness. The messenger of darkness leads all the children of righteousness astray. And until his end, all their sin, inequities, wickedness, and all their unlawful deeds are caused by his dominion in accordance with the mysteries of Eloah. Every one of their chastisements and every one of the seasons of their distress shall be brought about by the rule of his persecution. For all his allotted spirits seek the overthrow of the sons of light. But the Elohim of Yisrael and his messenger of truth will succor all the sons of light. For it is he who created the Ruachoth of light and darkness, and founded every action upon them, and established every deed upon their ways. And he loves the one everlastingly and delights in its works forever. But the counsel of the other he loathes, and forever hates its ways. These are their ways in the world for the enlightenment of the heart of man and so that all the paths of true righteousness may be made straight before him, and so that the fear of the laws of Yahuwah may be instilled in his heart, a ruach of humility, patience, abundant charity, unending goodness, comprehension and intelligence, mighty chokmah which trusts in the, all the deeds of Yahuwah and leans on his great loving kindness, a ruach of discernment in every purpose, of zeal for right laws, of set-apart intent with steadfastness of heart.
of great charity towards all the sons of truth, of admirable purity which detests all unclean idols, of humble conduct sprung from a comprehension of all things, and of trustworthy concealment of the mysteries of truth. These are the counsels of the Ruach to the sons of truth in this world. And as for the visitation of all who walk in this Ruach, think about the people who were of this disposition when our Mashiach came. It shall be healing, great shalom in a long life, and fruitfulness, together with every everlasting birak oath or blessing, and eternal joy in life without end, a crown of esteem, and a garment of majesty in unending light. But the ways of the spirit of falsehood are these, greed and slackness in the search for righteousness, wickedness and lies, haughtiness and pride, falseness and deceit, cruelty and abundant evil, ill temper and much folly and brazen insolence, abominable deeds in a spirit of lust, and ways of lewdness in the service of uncleanness, a blaspheming tongue, blindness of eye and dullness of ear, stiffness of neck and heaviness of heart, so that man walks in all the ways of darkness and guile. And think about the Pharisees and the Sadducees and those that rejected him and what happened to them. And the visitation of all who walk in this Ruach, or spirit, shall be a multitude of plagues by the hand of all the destroying messengers, everlasting damnation by the avenging wrath of the fury of Elohim, eternal torment and endless dishonor together with a shameful extinction in the fire of the dark regions. The times of all their generations shall be spent in sorrowful mourning and in bitter misery and in calamities of darkness until they are destroyed without remnant or survivor. The nature of all the children of men is ruled by these, and during their life all the hosts of men have a portion in their divisions and walk in their ways, and the whole reward for their deeds shall be for everlasting ages, according to whether each man's portion in their two divisions is great or small. For Yahuwah has established the Ruach Oath in equal measure until the final age, and has set everlasting hatred between their divisions. The final age is when he uproots Satan, and he goes into the lake of fire with all that serve him, and then death is no more. We're all going to be renewed and not have the evil inclination again. Okay. And has set everlasting hatred between their divisions. Truth abhors the works of unrighteousness, and unrighteousness hates all the ways of truth. And their struggle is fierce in all their arguments, for they do not walk together. Yet in the mysteries of his comprehension, and in his esteemed hokma or wisdom, Elohim has ordained an end for unrighteousness, and at the time of the visitation he will destroy it forever. Then truth, which has wallowed in the ways of wickedness during the dominion of unrighteousness, until the appointed time of judgment, shall arise in the world forever. Yahuwah will then purify every deed of man with his truth. He will refine for himself man's frame by rooting out all spirit of unrighteousness from the bonds of his flesh. He will cleanse him of all wicked deeds with a spirit or ruach of set apartness. Like purifying waters, he will shed upon him the ruach of truth to cleanse him of all abomination and unrighteousness. And this is what they talked about as Yaakov in his epistle mentioned, they were the first fruits of the, of the age to come because they were immersed and then the unclean Ruach was cast away from them, and they were given the Ruach of truth. Okay? As long as they did not do anything that would incur jurisdiction from Satan over them, again, they would never have that problem as long as they lived, which is what they all walked out, and you can see in their actions.
okay? And then you can see the fall of those that did not do so, like Simon the magician. This is, and he shall be plunged into the Ruach of purification, that he may instruct the upright in the knowledge of the Most High and teach the Hokma of the sons of Shemaim to the perfect of way. For Eloah has chosen them for an everlasting covenant, and all the esteem of Adam shall be theirs. There shall be no more lies, and all the works of injustice shall be put to shame. Until now, the Ruach oath of truth and unrighteousness struggles in the hearts of men, and they walk in both chokmah and folly. According to his portion of truth, so does a man hate unrighteousness, and according to his inheritance in the realm of unrighteousness, so is he wicked and so hates truth. And this is why you don't argue with people, because it's not of our doing. It's what they. It's what condition we're in, that we love the one or cling to the other, as it's mentioned elsewhere. For Yahuwah has established the two ruachoth in equal measure until the determined end, and until the renewal, and He knows the reward of their deeds from all eternity. He has allotted them to the children of men that they may know good and evil, and that the destiny of all the living may be according to the Ruach within them at the time of the visitation. All right, the next section is from Book 7 of the Apostolic Constitutions, and it's on the two ways, the way of life and the way of death. This is by far one of my favorite. Says, this is a title, that's why I have it in brackets, okay? It says that there are two ways, the one natural of life and the other introduced afterwards of death, and that the former is from El and the latter of error from the snares of the adversary. <clears throat> the lawgiver Moshe said to the Yisraeli, Behold, I have set before you, or before your face, the way of life and the way of death. He added, choose life that you may live. Eliyahu the foreteller also said to the people, How long will you halt with both your legs? If Yahuwah be Elohim, follow him. Yahuwah Yahushua also said righteously, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. We also following our teacher Mashiach, who is the deliverer of all men, especially of those that believe, are obliged to say that there are two ways, the one of life, the other of death, which have no comparison one with another, for they are very different or rather entirely separate, and the way of life is that of nature or what our founders called the law of nature and nature's Elohim. But that of death was afterwards introduced, it not being according to the mind of El, but from the snares of Hashatan, or the adversary. The first way, therefore, is that of life, and is this, which the Torah also does appoint, to love Yahuwah Elohim with all your mind and with all your soul, who is the one and only El, besides whom there is no other, and your neighbor as yourself. And whatsoever you would not should be done to you, do not do to another. Barak them that curse you, pray for them that despitefully use you. Love your enemies, for what thanks is it if you love those that love you? for even the nations do the same. But love those that hate you, and you shall have no enemy. For, says he, you shall not hate any man, no, not an Egyptian, nor an Edomite, for they are all the workmanship of Elohim. Avoid not the persons, but the sentiments of the wicked. And this is why I don't really block people. Abstain from fleshly and worldly lusts. If anyone gives you a stroke on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. 
Not that revenge is evil, but that patience is more honorable. For Dawid says, if I have made returns to them that repaid me evil. If anyone compels you to go one mile, go with him too. And he that will sue you at the law and take away your coat, let him have your cloak also. And from him that takes your goods, require them not again. Give to him that asks you, and from him that would borrow of you, do not shut your hand. For the righteous man is pitiful and lends. For your father would have you to give to all, who himself makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sends his reign on the righteous and on the unrighteous. It is therefore reasonable to give to all out of your own labors. For, says he, honor Yahuwah out of your righteous labors, but so that the set-apart ones be preferred. You shall not kill. That is, you shall not destroy a man like yourself, for you dissolve what was well made. Not as if all killing were wicked, but only that of the innocent. But the killing which is righteous is reserved to the magistrates alone. You shall not commit adultery, for you divide one flesh into two. They too shall be one flesh, for the husband and wife are one in nature, in consent, in union, in disposition, and the conduct of life but they are separated in sex and number. You shall not corrupt boys, for this wickedness is contrary to nature, and arose from Sodom, which was therefore entirely consumed with the fire sent from Elohim. Let such a one be accursed, and all the people shall say Amen. You shall not commit fornication, for, says he, there shall not be a fornicator among the children of Israel. You shall not steal. For Achan, when he had stolen in, Yisra in Yisrael at Jericho, was stoned to death. And Gehazi, who stole and told a lie, inherited the leprosy of Naaman. And Yahuda, who stole the poor man's money, or sorry, the poor's money, betrayed Yahuwah of esteem to the Yahudim, and repented, and hanged himself and burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And Hananiah, or and Anias, right, and Sapphira, his wife who stole their own goods and tempted the Ruach of Yahuwah, were immediately at the sentence of Kepha, our fellow sent one, struck dead. You shall not use magic. You shall not use witchcraft. For he says, you shall not suffer a witch to live. You shall not slay your child by causing abortion, nor kill that which is begotten. For everything that is shaped and has received a nephesh or soul from Elohim, if it be slain, shall be avenged. As being unrighteously destroyed. You shall not covet the things that belong to your neighbor, as his wife, or his servant, or his ox, or his field. You shall not forswear yourself, for it is said you shall not swear at all. But if it cannot be avoided, you shall swear truly, for everyone that swears by him shall be commended. You shall not bear false witness. For he that falsely accuses the needy provokes to anger him that made him. You shall not speak evil, for, says he, love not to speak evil, lest you be taken away. Nor shall you be mindful of injuries, for the ways of those that remember injuries are unto death. You shall not be double-minded, nor double-tongued, for a man's own lips are a strong snare to him, and a talkative person shall not be prospered on the earth. A great example of this <clears throat> is when Dawid was in error, when he had did what he had done with Bathsheba. I believe it was Gad or Nathan that came to him and gave him the parable of the sheep 
and the rich man and the poor man. And then he was judged by the words of his own mouth and the very things he said in judgment against him, against that parable, came against him. Your words shall not be vain, for you shall give an account of every idle word. You shall not tell lies, for, says he, you shall destroy all those that speak lies. You shall not be covetous nor rapacious, for, says he, woe to him that is covetous towards his neighbor with an evil covetedness. You shall not be an hypocrite, lest your portion be with them. You shall not be ill-natured nor proud, for Elohim resists the proud. You shall not accept persons in right ruling, for the right ruling is Yahuwah's. You shall not hate any man. You shall surely reprove your brother and not become guilty on his account. And reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Eschew or cast away from you all evil and all that is like it. For, says he, abstain from unrighteousness, and trembling shall not come near you. Be not soon angry, nor spiteful, nor passionate, nor furious, nor daring, lest you undergo the fate of Cain, and of Shaul, and of Yahuab. For the first of these slew his brother Havel, because Abel, was found to be preferred before him with Elohim, and because Havel's offering was preferred. The second persecuted Kadoshi Dawid, who had slain Goliath the Philistine, being envious of the praises of the women who danced. The third slew two generals of armies, Abner of Yisrael and Amasa of Yahuda. Be not a diviner, for that leads to idolatry. For, says Shemuel, divination is sin. And there shall be no divination in Yaakov, nor soothsaying in Yisrael. You shall not use enchantments or purgations for your child. You shall not be a soothsayer, nor a diviner by great or little birds. Nor shall you learn wicked arts. For all these things has the law forbidden. Be not one that desires for evil, for you will be led into intolerable sins. You shall not speak obscenely, nor use wanton glances, nor be a drunkard, for from such causes arises whoredoms and adulteries. Be not a lover of money, lest you serve mammon instead of Elohim. Be not vainglorious, nor haughty, nor high-minded, for from all these things arrogance does spring. Remember him who said, Yahuwah, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. I have not exercised myself in great matters, nor in things too high for me, but I was humble. Be not a murmurer, remembering the punishment which those underwent who murmured against Moshe. Be not self-willed, be not malicious, be not hard-hearted, be not passionate, be not mean-spirited, for all these things lead to blasphemy. But be meek, as were Moshe and Dawid, since the meek shall inherit the earth. Be slow to wrath, for such a one is very prudent, since he that is hasty of spirit is a very fool. Be chesedi, or merciful, for prosperous are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Be sincere, quiet, good, trembling at the word of Elohim. You shall not exalt yourself as did the Pharisee, for every one that exalts himself shall be abased. And that which is of high esteem with man is an abomination with Elohim. You shall not entertain confidence in your inner being, for a confident man shall fall into mischief. 
And this is self-confidence they're talking about, just like being self-willed. We should be like our father Abraham doing the will of the one who made us. You shall not go along with the foolish, but with the prudent and righteous. For he that walks with prudent men shall be prudent or wise, but he that walks with the foolish shall be known. Receive the afflictions that fall upon you with an even mind and the chances of life without overmuch sorrow, knowing that a reward shall be given to you by Elohim, as was given to Job and to Eleazar. You shall honor him that speaks to you the word of Elohim, and be mindful of him day and night, and you shall reverence him not as the author of your birth, but as one that is made the occasion of your well-being. For where the doctrine concerning Elohim is, there Elohim is present. Just like he said, where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am with them, right? You shall every day seek the face of the Kodeshim, or set apart ones, that you may acquiesce in their words. You shall not make schisms among the Kodeshim, but be mindful of the followers of Korak. You shall make shalom between those that are at variance, as Moshe did when he persuaded them to be friends. You shall rightly rule righteously, for the right ruling is Yahuwah's. You shall not accept persons when you were approved for sins, but do as Eliyahu and Mikayahu, who, or, and, sorry, as Eliyahu and Mikayah did to Ahab, and Abimelech the Ethiopian to Zadik Yahu, and Nathan to Dawid, and Yahukanon to Herod. If you're not familiar with those, we'll go over them, but I'm sure I just mentioned Nathan and Dawid, and Yahukanon was accusing Herod for taking his brother's wife, if you remember, right? Eliyahu went to Ahab and told them that they had to stop worshiping Baal for what he was doing and he married a, a woman who was suffering he was suffering to do those things right be not of a doubtful mind in your prayer whether it shall be granted or no for yahuwah said to me kepha upon the sea you of little belief wherefore did you doubt be not ready to stretch out your hand to receive and to shut it when you should give if you have by the work of your hands, give, that you may labor for the redemption of your sins. For by alms and acts of steadfast fidelity, sins are purged away. You shall not grudge to give to the poor, nor when you have given shall you murmur, for you shall know who will repay you your reward. For, says he, he that has mercy on the poor man lends to Yahuwah. According to his gift, so shall it be repaid him again. You shall not turn away from him that is needy. For, says he, he that stops his ears, that he may not hear the cry of the needy, himself also shall cry, and there shall be none to hear him. You shall communicate in all things to your brother, and shall not say your goods are your own. For the common participation of the necessaries of life is appointed to all men by Elohim. And those necessaries for life are specifically enumerated or listed in Sirach ben Yahushua. I don't remember the exact chapter, but it's good to read the whole thing anyways. You shall not take off your hand from your son or from your daughter, but shall teach them the fear of Elohim from their youth. For, says he, correct your son, so shall he afford you good expectation. You shall not command your manservant or your maidservant, who trusts in the same Elohim, with bitterness of inner being, lest they groan against you, and wrath be upon you from Elohim. And you servants, be subject to your masters, as to the representatives of Elohim, with attention and fear as to Yahuwah and not to men. 
you shall hate all hypocrisy and whatsoever is pleasing to Yahuwah, that shall you do. By no means forsake the commands of Yahuwah, but you shall observe what things you have received from him, neither adding to them nor taking away from them. For you shall not add unto his words, lest he convict you, and you become a liar. You shall confess your sins unto Yahuwah your Elohim, and you shall not add unto them, that it may be well with you from Yahuwah your Elohim, who desires not the death of the sinner, but his repentance. You shall be observant to your father and mother as the causes of your being born, that you may live long on the earth which Yahuwah your Elohim gives you. Do not overlook your brethren or your kinsfolk, for you shall not overlook those nearly related to you. You shall fear the king, knowing that his appointment is of Yahuwah. His rulers you shall honor as the ministers of Elohim, for they are the revengers of all unrighteousness, to whom pay taxes, tribute, and every oblation with a willing mind. You shall not proceed to your prayer in the day of your wickedness, before you have laid aside your bitterness. This is the way of life, in which may you be found, through Yahushua Mashiach, our Yahuwah. And for anyone that's not familiar, throughout the entirety of the Renewed Covenant and the Old Covenant, our Mashiach is called by his Father's name. It's the name above every name that he obtained by inheritance that it says and the most clear way to see this is if you look at the the greek manuscripts that have what they call the um the oh, the sacred names it's the uh the placeholders that were used from the third to the 14th century nomnia sacra is what it's called in latin but when you look at those and they put three or two letter words with a line over them for certain words, for the name of our Father, the name of our Mashiach, uh, Yahuwah, Yahushua, Mashiach, the word for Adam or man, upright pole, the word for Elohim, the word for Ruach, or what we call spirit. And anytime it was talking about our Father or our Mashiach, they would use the placeholders because the, the Greek or Latin equivalents could not work, and they didn't use that. So when you take the time to look at these, and you can find it in the Codex Synacticanus is an online version. You can look at most of the scriptures there. There's other versions that you can compare it with as well. But in the Renewed Covenant writings, in the book of Luke at the beginning, when he's born and at his resurrection, he's called Yahuwah. All throughout the epistles, he's called Yahushua, our, Yahushua Mashiach, our Yahuwah, or Yahuwah, Yahushua Mashiach. But you never see that in the modern translations today. And that was also part of what was hidden with the making of, or during the time of the second woe. And that wasn't, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but they did not have other versions except for the Latin Vulgate until Erasmus made the Textus Receptus, where he compiled the manuscripts that came from the East after the fall of Constantinople. And he put together what they called the received text. In that, he didn't use the placeholders at all. And he used the equivalent Greek words and names where they had Kyrios and other things. And that's why you have the normal translations in English that we do today. So these things are becoming known and anyone can at this time still study it for themselves. And I highly encourage you to do that. But to continue. This is yet... The way of death is known by its wicked practices, for therein is the ignorance of Elohim, and the introduction of many evils and disorders and disturbances, whereby come murders, adulteries, fornications, perjuries, unlawful lusts, thefts, idolatries, magic arts, witchcrafts, rapines, false witnesses, hypocrisies, 
double-heartedness, deceit, pride, malice, insolence, covetedness, obscene talk, jealousy, confidence, haughtiness, arrogance, impudence, persecution of the good, enmity to truth, love of lies, ignorance of righteousness. For they who do such things do not adhere to goodness or to righteous right ruling. They watch not for good, but for evil, from whom meekness and patience are far off, who love vain things, pursuing after reward, having no pity on the poor, not laboring for him that is in misery, nor knowing him that made them, murderers of infants, destroyers of the workmanship of Elohim, that turn away from the needy, adding affliction to the afflicted, the flatteries of the rich, the despisers of the poor, full of sin. May you children be delivered from all these. See that no one seduce you from piety, for, says he, you may not turn aside from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have comprehension in all that you do. For if you do not turn out of the right way, you will not be unrighteous. And the last one here is from the Epistle of Barnabas. <clears throat> it is very similar to the one we just read, but not quite exact. And this is from chapter, it says 14 here, okay? It says, and thus I trust I have declared to you as much and with as great simplicity as I could those things which make for your deliverance, so as not to have omitted anything that might be requisite thereto. I'm sorry, there's one more after this. For should I speak further of the things that now are and of those that are to come, you would not yet comprehend them, seeing they lie in parables. This, therefore, shall suffice as to these things. Let us now go on to the other kind of knowledge and doctrine. There are two ways of doctrine and power, the one of light, the other of darkness. But there is a great deal of difference between these two ways. For over one are appointed the messengers of Elohim, the leaders of the way of light, over the other the messengers of Satan. And the one is Yahuwah from everlasting to everlasting. The other is the prince of the time of unrighteousness. Now the way of light is this. If anyone desires to obtain to the place that is appointed for him, and will hasten there by his works and the knowledge that has been given to us for walking in it, to this effect, you shall love him that made you, you shall esteem him that has redeemed you from death. You shall be simple in heart and rich in the Ruach. You shall not cleave to those that walk in the way of death. You shall hate to do anything that is not pleasing unto Eloah. You shall abhor all dissimulation, or not doing what you say. You shall not neglect any of the commands of Yahuwah. You shall not exalt yourself, but shall be humble. You shall not take honor to yourself. You shall not enter into any wicked counsel against your neighbor. You shall not be overconfident in your heart. You shall not commit fornication, nor adultery. Neither shall you corrupt yourself with mankind. You shall not make use of the word of Elohim to any impurity. You shall not accept any man's person when you reprove anyone's faults. You shall be gentle. You shall be quiet. You shall tremble at the words which you have heard. You shall not keep any hatred in your heart against your brother. You shall not entertain any doubt whether it shall be or not. You shall not take the name of Yahuwah in vain. Which that is a reminiscent of the third commandment, which means you shall not lift up his name to a lie, falsehood, fabrication, not, or ruin, for he will not purify the one who lifts up his name 
to a lie, falsehood, fabrication, not or ruin. And that's really eth, aleph, tau, yahuwah in both those instances in the third commandment. It says, you shall love your neighbor above your own soul or inner being. You shall not destroy your conceptions before they are brought forth, nor kill them after they are born. You shall not withdraw your hand from your son or from your daughter, but shall teach them from their youth the reverence of Yahuwah. You shall not covet your neighbor's goods, neither shall you be an extortioner. Neither shall your heart be joined to the proud, but you shall be numbered among the righteous and the lowly. Whatever events shall happen unto you, you shall receive them as good. You shall not be double-minded or double-tongued, for a double tongue is a snare of death. You shall be subject unto Yahuwah and to inferior masters as to the representatives of Elohim in fear and reverence. You shall not be bitter in your commands towards any of your servants that are that trust in Elohim, lest you chance to not to fear him who is over both, because he came not to call any with respect of persons, but whomsoever the Ruach had prepared. You shall communicate to your neighbor of all you have. You shall not call anything your own. For if you partake in such things as are incorruptible, how much more should you do it in those that are corruptible? You shall not be forward to speak, for the mouth is the snare of death. Strive for your inner being with all your might. Reach not out your hand to receive and withhold it when you should give. You shall love as the apple of your eye everyone that speaks unto you the word of Yahuwah. Call to your remembrance day and night the future judgment. You shall seek out every day the persons of the righteous and both consider and go about to extort others by the word and meditate how you may deliver an inner being. You shall also labor with your hands to give to the poor that your sins may be forgiven you. You shall not deliberate whether you should give, nor having given, murmur at it. Give to everyone that asks, so shall you know who is the good rewarder of your gifts. Keep what you have received. You shall neither add to it, nor take from it. Let the wicked be always your aversion. You shall judge righteous judgment. You shall never cause divisions, but shall make shalom between those that are at variance and bring them together. You shall confess your sins and not come to your prayer with an evil conscience. This is the way of light. But the way of darkness is crooked and full of cursing, for it is the way of eternal death with punishment in which they that walk meet those things that destroy their own inner beings. Such are idolatry, self-confidence, pride of power, hypocrisy, double-mindedness, adultery, murder, rapine, pride, transgression, deceit, malice, arrogance, witchcraft, covetedness, and the lack of the fear of Yahuwah. In this walk are those who are persecutors of them that are good, haters of truth, lovers of lies, who know not the reward of righteousness, nor cleave to anything that is good, who administer not righteous judgment to the widow and orphan, who watch for wickedness and not for the fear of Yahuwah, from whom gentleness and patience are far off, who love vanity and follow after rewards, having no compassion upon the poor, nor take any pains for such as are heavy laden and oppressed, ready to evil speaking, not knowing him that made them, murderers of children, corrupters of the creatures of Elohim, 
that turn away from the needy, oppress the afflicted, are the advocates of the rich, but unbalanced judges of the poor, being altogether sinners. It is therefore fitting that learning the right commands of Yahuwah, which we have before mentioned, we should walk in them. For he who does such things shall be esteemed in the kingdom of Elohim. But he that chooses the other part shall be destroyed, together with his works. For this cause there shall be both a resurrection and a retribution. I beseech those that are in high estate among you, if so be you will take the counsel which with a good intention I offer to you. You have with those with you towards whom you may do good. Do not forsake them. For the day is at hand in which all things shall be destroyed, together with the wicked one. Yahuwah is near, and his reward is with him. I beseech you, therefore, again and again, be as good lawgivers to one another. Continue steadfast counselors to each other. Remove from among you all hypocrisy. And may El Yahuwah of all the world give you prudence, knowledge, counsel, and comprehension of his judgments in patience. Be you taught of Elohim, seeking what it is Yahuwah requires of you, and doing it, that you may be delivered in the day of judgment, or the yom of arbitration. And if there be among you any remembrance of what is good, think of me meditating upon these things, that both my desire and my watching for you may turn to a good account. I beseech you, I ask it as a favor of you, while you are in this beautiful tabernacle of the body, be lacking in none of these things, but without ceasing seek them and fulfill every command, for these things are fitting and worthy to be done. Therefore have I given the more diligence to write unto you according to my ability, that you might rejoice. Farewell, children of love and shalom. Yahuwah of esteem and of all favor be with your Ruach. Amen. The end of the epistle of Barnabas, the emissary and fellow traveler of Shaul, the emissary. Okay, and then the last section we have here is from the book called The Shepherd of Hermas, which is in the second book of three. The first is the visions, the second is the commands, and the third is the parables. And this is command number six. That every man has two messengers and of the suggestions of both. I commanded you, said he, which is our Mashiach, in my first commandments, that you should keep amuna, which is belief or trust or trustworthiness, also known as faith or faithfulness. Okay, it's all that, that one word has all that meaning to it. That you should keep amuna and reverence and repentance. Yes, master, said I. He continued, but now I will show you the virtues of these commands, that you may know their effects how they are prescribed alike to the righteous and unrighteous. Do you therefore believe the righteous, but give no credit to the unrighteous? For righteousness keeps the right way, but unrighteousness the wicked way. Do you therefore keep the right way, and leave that which is evil? For the evil way has not a good end, but has many stumbling blocks. It is rugged and full of thorns and leads to destruction, and it is hurtful to all such as walk in it. But they who go in the right way walk with evenness and without offense, because it is not rough or thorny. And if you remember what thorns are in his parable, it's the cares and, and worries of this life and the things that happen, right? You see, therefore, how it is best to walk in this way. You shall therefore go, says he, and all others, as many as believe in Eloah with all their heart, shall go through it. And now, says he, comprehend first of all what belongs to Amuna. There are two messengers with man, 
one of righteousness, the other of inequity. And I said unto him, Master, how shall I know that there are two such messengers with man? Here says he, and comprehend. The messenger of righteousness is mild and modest, and gentle, and quiet. When therefore he gets into your heart, immediately he talks with you of righteousness, of modesty, of chastity, of bountifulness, of forgiveness, of charity, of Kodeshah. When all these things come into your heart, know then that the messenger of righteousness is with you. And if you remember, I, I mentioned that lady before. The I can't remember her name, but it's from the Eagle's Wings Ministry. And she teaches how the medical field found and science discovered that his word is literally what brings health to the body and doing the things that he enjoined causes it. She mentioned specifically that we have our alpha wave brain brainwaves when we're thinking actively and conscious. We have our beta waves when we're sleeping. And there's an outside influence when people use ESP or when they're doing mind reading or when someone has thoughts from outside of themselves, it's theta waves that are, are recorded. And this is known. So it actually is a, a, a phenomenon that is demonstrable that we have things from outside of us that influence our mind and what we think. And that is picked up in what they call theta waves. But we can know where it comes from by the content of, this, of such thoughts that pop into your head. Okay? When all these things come into your heart, know then that the messenger of righteousness is with you. Wherefore, hearken to this messenger and to his works. Learn also the works of the messenger of inequity. He is first of all bitter and angry and foolish, and his works are pernicious and overthrow the servants of Elohim. When therefore these things come into your heart, you shall know by his works that this is the messenger of inequity. And I said unto him, Master, how shall I comprehend these things? Hear, says he, and comprehend. When anger overtakes you, or bitterness, know that he is in you, as also when the desire of many things, and of the best meats, and of drunkenness, when the love of what belongs to others, pride, and much speaking and ambition, and the like things come upon you. When therefore these things arise in your heart, Know that the messenger of inequity is with you. Seeing, therefore, you know his works, depart from them all and give no credit to him because his works are evil and become not the servants of El. Here, therefore, you have the works of both these messengers. Comprehend now and believe the messenger of righteousness because his instruction is good. For let a man be never so happy, yet if the thoughts of the other messenger arise in his heart, that man or woman must needs sin. But let man or woman be never so wicked, if the works of the messenger of righteousness come into his heart, that man or woman must needs do some good, meaning never do the evil, always do what's right. Okay? You see, therefore, how it is good to follow the messenger of righteousness. If, therefore, you shall follow him and submit to his works, you shall live unto Elohim. And as many as shall submit to his work shall live also unto Elohim. Thank you for your time. There is much more. There Again, in the Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs alone, there's a few more references of the two ways. And there might be more elsewhere that I wasn't able to gather, but the gist of it is fully covered. And I think that this is beneficial for anyone to take the time and check how they are to remove the plank out of our eyes. And then we can worry about the splinter in others. So you all have a wonderful Shabbat and a Shavua Tov ahead, and we will see you next time.